Hello everybody and welcome back to the Artist Works Live Dispatch from Home. We've done quite a few of these uh, and we're very happy to bring some music into your home while we're all just sort of sheltering in place, at least for now. Um, and so uh, we are talking to a lot of our artists and some of their friends uh, that are from here at Artist Works. Uh, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Artist Works. We're an online music education company or online Ooh. instruction company where um, a lot of adult players from all around the world learn with us uh, through these master musicians that we're often talking to uh, on these live dispatches from home. And so uh, we want to uh, pay tribute to all of those people who are on the front lines uh, of this healthcare crisis and, of course, honor those who have passed and those who are suffering with the disease now or taking care of someone. Uh, so we are joined today by uh, Mike Marshall and Daryl Anger, and I'm going to let them go ahead and start us off with uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Bravo, bravo. Well, bravo, y'all. Hello, Daryl. Where are you, Daryl? Oh, I'm down here in Palo Alto. Um, okay. Yeah, where everyone's sheltering in place pretty I'm well. A, I'm here in Oakland, California, up in the Making hills. down here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I'm in Napa. <laughs> We're Everything all in California. Okay? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of odd and unusual. I guess that's what odd means, though, doesn't it? <laughs> it's unusual. <laughs> odd <and> Oops. unusual. <laughs> it's crazy times, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, Mike, it really is really just, you know, obviously unprecedented. We say this every single time we come on here, but sure. my goodness, you know, this yeah. is the weirdest of the weird. But um, what's great is we're helping people to bring music and keep music in their lives and so this is a good thing and i thank you both for teaching the world music with us we're quite happy to have daryl obviously teaching fiddle yeah <laughs> and mike teaching mandolin so you guys are a great addition to the artist works team and i know you you're really busy right now aren't you things are oh, it's, yeah it's it's you know everybody's at home and they're all working on their stuff and it's it's great actually you know uh when all we come out of this, everybody's going to be about 10 times as good as they would. Nobody will be able to believe anybody else. You know, That's right. Be, be <laughs> That's be true. Off the charts. Us so, included, right? Yeah, I've been getting <laughs> a lot of comments from the students saying, boy, it's been great. I finally have some time to work on, on music. And uh, they're loving the, this, that we're living in this time when we have this kind of access to each other. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and 
It's different at Artist Works. For those of you who don't know, although I see some very familiar names, I'm quite happy to see you returning. Uh, what's different at Artist Works is that these guys, these master musicians, have come into our studio, and believe me, we did not have to drag them here. Um, <laughs> and they recorded really just about everything they know, and that allows us to teach pretty much anything you want to learn to play. But one of the really special ways that you can get specific guidance is to submit a video to these master musicians and they respond with a custom made video and then we keep those two paired together and put them on the website so everybody can see that video exchange and that's why I asked these guys you've probably been pretty busy because it seems like everybody's at well everybody is at home I guess um, and sending in a lot of videos is that the case for you Mike? Yeah it's definitely uh, come up of, of a notch or two but I love it you know I love communicating with the people the students and I'm, I'm usually sort of haranguing them to do that send me a video because the people who do send in videos get the most out of uh, this the system that you have created patricia um there's a lot of folks who are a little bit shy and they think oh golly you know i don't want everybody to see my plan and mike he's probably going to bust me right <laughs> <laughs> no, you never would i would never do i'm a very gentle teacher and um I have great relationship with the online students. It's been a it's been a great opportunity for me to yeah. meet players from all over the world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Daryl? Well, that's a great thing too. Yeah, you really you know you built uh, it's an incredible network, and we've got everybody from people that just picked up the fiddle yesterday to people who have been playing our lives, professionals, and that's it's it's all exciting. You know, it's all an adventure for me, and I wind up learning so much. And I think you really learn something until you've taught it a little bit and so this has been a fantastic you know uh it's getting up on 12 years now i think something like yeah, that gosh. i've been doing this and we've been get you know got the lessons but the, those video exchanges are amazing because you know what's nice is that uh you know they're you can do them at any you can send one in you can send it in three in the morning you know and it's yeah. fine it's, and right. then i can do the response at three, in the, three in the morning or whenever it's um uh, because it's um, you know, unhooked, you know, in real time, there's a, a, a lot more freedom and a uh, chance to work on smaller, you know, parts, you know, which is always great. You know, if you have a regular 45 minute lesson, you kind of have to fill up that 45 minutes, you wind up forgetting a lot of stuff. And then yeah. these, these kind of things, you can really focus in kind of great. And um, yeah, and I, <laughs> I like the idea that's kind of, you know, I can think about my response, somebody brings in the thing, I can think, oh, yeah, you know, wow, I've, what what is really going on? I can watch the, the videos over and over again and figure out, well, what 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 are they doing? You know, something I might not catch, you know, in a in a lesson because there's so much going on. I can see, you know, oh, that's a good point. I think it's a great point, too. You know, I always am thinking of the side of the student who's really nervous because they're studying with this master and they, they're, they're drinking from the fire hose. You know, they can't remember everything that you're going to say, and they can't remember it from week to week. I mean, they try. But mm -hmm. for you, too, I mean, you've got to make a split-second decision when you're live. And, and then I'll bet later you think about it and, and, and wonder, mm -hmm. oh, did I mention that? It, you know, or yeah. does that happen to you? Well, when did I, I say it the right way? Yeah. yeah. When I used to take lessons from people, I would, you know, I would be get start getting embarrassed when I, you know, you ask them to repeat something. The teacher, oh, could you repeat that? Uh, I used to take some jazz lessons from a saxophone player, and, and you know, they'd get like about two notes in, and I'd go like, "What was that? What was that? Could you repeat that? Uh, could you?" Oh, I'm feeling so embarrassed. I guess I'm going to pretend I just know exactly what you did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens and, to a lot of people, though. I think There's another dimension to this too, where the student films themselves and of course has to watch it and, and says to themselves, gee, I can't send that in. I might, I have to do it better. And so they're starting to practice uh, in a way that they maybe hadn't if they didn't know that they were sending in a video to us. So they're doing work before they even get to us, which is yeah. very cool. Just recording yourself. I remember when I used to study with Mr. Baker, it was required that you recorded your rehearsal every single day. You had wow. to record it, and oh, yeah. oh, then you go listening to it, and you think, oh. Oh, I thought I sounded a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that really it takes me back to the first, you know, getting together with the, you know, when we were trying to start the David Grisman quintet, you know, uh, David would record everything. I, I was never that disciplined. 
Mm. Uh, so yeah, every rehearsal got recorded and you'd listen back and, and uh, yeah. wow, <laughs> that was a real wake up call. Yeah. Wow is the right word for sure. Um, so can I just take a little divergence here? We always ask everybody to tell us where they're from and to say hello. And I'm just going to pop a couple oh, yeah. up on the screen here. I might take a little bit of mic out. I hope not. Let me see. Oh, isn't that automatic? Oh, I love it. Ah. All right. So, wow. That's Russ Young, Matthew, Michael, Russ Christopher. Matthew that's a lot Williams. of people. Okay. I don't know yeah. why oh, that's David. there. but Yeah. Hey. It's a lot of people. Right, David. <laughs> David Blackman. Great for the player. Yeah. And Susan joins a lot of our Susan, uh, live yeah. dispatches. I don't know if you know these folks maybe from um, your courses or not, but um, they love to, to <laughs> sign in. You know, it's unfair because yeah. they have these fake names online that they I have. Know. Some of you, you know. And so I might not know her as Peggy. Is she your student, Pearl? Uh, uh, yeah. And oh. she, of course, she, she comes in and she, her handle is Pearl. So Oh, there you go. P. Oh, Earl. I get it. Earl, I get it. She's, uh, she's Mary Ann. All right. Hello, And Mary Tom Ann. Weisman. Oh, Tom, and, of course. And then Trevor <laughs> saying hello. <laughs> yeah. Trevor. Yeah, I can't teach him anything. He's, he's a trumpet player. <laughs> <laughs> you can't teach him anything. And here's <laughs> Judy from Berkeley. Hey, so Judy. She's... All right. I know. Mando Judy. That's her name on the side. Oh, is this? Very oh, cool. Mando Judy. It's so yeah. nice. Thank you for joining us. My gosh, you've been with us forever. You it's know, wonderful she's... to have you here. Um, and Bonnie is saying hello. Yeah. Um, and I'll just put a couple more up here. Um, this is Michael J. from Bellingham, Washington. Hello. And you might know this person. I doubt it. Though. I mean, yeah, you're from South Florida. Maybe you South know. South Florida. Richard Sherwood. <laughs> yes, of course. I believe he's new, fairly new to the site. They're going to have to ask some questions, aren't they? Or have they yes. already? Yeah. Um, Amy. Hello, Amy. Amy. I'm just getting right. some of these hellos in here. And Amy Kim, has helped me publish all of my books. She's an incredible <gasps> music editor. Oh well, well we're very years. we're very thankful for her. Then that's that's for she sure. Is great. And I Steve, for everybody here. and then here is Stephen Barnett, and right. he's coming to you from uh, Wow, Panama, Panama. A oh yes, plan, Stephen, a mandolin. How do you do? How's Panama? <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you. There are so many other. You know, hello's here. It's it's kind. Of, you've got a lot of people watching right now. Lisa from Tasmania. <laughs> oh, yes, man. she's great. Oh, she's a, a bassoon a player there. with the Tasmanian Symphony. Or oh, is what? that right? Symphony? Wow, that's very cool. And then very she cool. took up the mandolin. <laughs> okay, so you guys heard them. Start asking questions, um, so we can get those up here. Uh, I had a couple uh, questions of my own. Um, that uh, I we may have talked about this before, but. The very first time you guys met personally, like mm. when did you meet? Wow. Well, hmm. you want to go first, Daryl, or should I? Wow. Well, I think, you know, it was, it was actually a rehearsal, right? You, <laughs> I think I just showed up. I showed up from Florida to we, San Francisco. I, you know, I knew you from your cassette that you sent of right. you playing all that, all that David Grisman material, all of instruments. I was a huge fan and I had yeah. got the record that they had made and I'd learned all these tunes. And so I basically just sent them oh, <laughs> a demo. So I didn't know it was a rehearsal yeah. demo. <laughs> it oh, was wow. great. Yeah. So we were, you know, kind of psyched, uh, you know, somebody could do that um, all the way from Florida and just learn all our stuff and, and play all those instruments so well. And, uh, but we really weren't expecting you to show up in, you know, like two weeks later, you know, in your <laughs> Galaxy 500, you know. <laughs> I had a friend who was living out there in Berkeley, Jim Kirkland, and he said, come on out whenever you want. I've been helping. He had been helping you with the Mandolin World News, that little magazine that yeah. you guys put out for about 10 years. That was so cool. He was helping edit or something. And um, he said, I know those guys. I'll bring you over to their house. So, and where were you at the time, Daryl? Where where were well, you? I was living in the Bay Area. I was, I was, oh, I, I think I had moved out of David's basement at that point and had my own place. I had, you know, graduated from <laughs> dog basement. But uh, yeah, you know, I was around and uh, I probably living in Berkeley at that point. Yeah. Uh, it seems yeah. like we've all lived in the basement of somebody's house at some point oh, in yeah. our lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're course, musicians, you know, that's the way it yeah. goes. <laughs> that's the way of course, it goes. David's basement had a view of a mountain, so it was pretty cool. But, oh wow! Um, yeah, but then yeah, moving to uh, back to Bay Area and just uh, yeah, I had my own Galaxy 500 for about two weeks until somebody stole it. 
Oh, my that's God. the best thing that ever happened. I drove out really in a blue bad, Impala. Man. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's right. It, yeah, when they they're that long, it's kind of hard to tell what they are. You know, they're just you know because the front end and the back end are off out of the picture. <laughs> they can take off. They can fly. <laughs> yeah. So then, the, what about the first sort of I'm going to call it independent uh, collaboration for you guys? Whether it was a a concert or touring or a recording what oh, yeah. what kind well, of came know, first that where you you said all right we're doing this together yeah you know we were the two young guys in the group anyway and uh, we were you know kind of like the guys that were sort of trying to keep up in some ways and uh, I, I hopefully I, I helped Mike just figure out some of the the um, it, uh, psychological lines of force because there was a you know it was a band right there's always stuff so and uh like all just, bands we just hit it off the first tune we played was uh byron Berline tune that not that many people know uh and we just knew you know we knew a bunch of the same tunes and we uh just i just felt really comfortable playing with mike we and, we realized uh, that we had grown up sort of sort of uh drinking from the same well yeah. of music that was bubbling at that time in the early 70s. There was all this amazing sort of new grass that was starting to happen. Yeah. Well, John Hartford and the, and the you know, new grass revival. And, and of course, yeah, it just went on and on. Kind Tony Rice had already made a few records by then. And, and, and so there was this new thing happening with, with these instruments. And we were all hot on the trail to find out where it could go. And I just had my mind blown. You know, I'll just never forget the first time playing with that band and you guys. I mean, it was the nearest thing to levitation that I've ever experienced. Uh, wow. It's just like flying, the feeling of the groove with David and Tony and Todd Phillips on bass. And, you know, it was like living inside the record. It was very, <laughs> very psychedelic, let me tell you. Wow, that that's yeah. high very, praise. Yeah. Then Daryl and I ended up, I ended up finding a place to live right next door to Daryl. And so we just great. started this sort of 24 hour a day workshop, musical workshop, where yeah. we just played together, ate together, lived together. And so naturally writing music and teaching each other, each other's tunes. And it just grew out of a community that we yeah. created. That's really powerful. You know, yeah. there, it's, it's rare to have a friend that has been so important in your life, let alone been important to your music. And I think it's a real testament to your friendship and your brotherhood mm. to have been such an important part of each other's lives and an important part of each other's music. It's really... 40 years. Yeah. Most, yeah, that's yeah. Great. And we've been through all of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. All the downs, yeah. all the sideways. Is, and yeah. we always come back. You know, there's been periods where we didn't necessarily play together. Uh, Daryl had different groups he was in. I had different things I was doing, but we always somehow managed to come back to that yeah. duo. Doesn't it's that help? Kind that of amazing. Yeah, it does help it. And yeah. yeah, you're right, Patricia. It does. It help. And what's really interesting is that you know we're just there's something karmic going on because when we did go off and do things, it was often you know what we were doing was was almost the same thing. Like when I started the Turtle Island String Quartet. Mike uh, had this incredible idea to do a mandolin quartet, and those guys showed up just as the, the people showed up for the string quartet. At the same time, yeah. Yeah, it was. So uh, there we were, you know, uh, we're, you know, like out here, but we're doing this. It's the same right. thing. Yeah, it's amazing. You know? So there's, there's a lot of, there's some linkage there that's just mysterious and uh, beautiful. Yeah. It was meant to be. It was kismet, right? Isn't that what that's they say? It. That's yeah. what they say. Well, yeah, I've... it's it's indescribable, and that's way it's that way with musicians when you meet them. You know, when you play really well together, maybe they lived in a different place, even a different country, and spoke a different language, but you have this musical kinship that draws you together, and you feel the rhythm the same way or not. You know, and yeah. when it happens, you just embrace it and realize it's special and hang on to it. Yeah. Well, you speak as eloquently as you play, Mike. I really appreciate the way you're <laughs> describing this relationship. It's very touching. It is very Thanks. touching. A lot of us don't have friends that we're this close with, and I'm glad that you guys have each other. 
Um, we do have a few questions now. We kind of opened uh, the floodgates there a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. So yeah. let me take this banner off and let's get some questions going here. Some of them are from your students and some of them are not. So let's just try to click down through some of these. And then we want to hear some more music from you guys. So yeah, this we'll do is, our best. <laughs> yeah, I know you will, okay. Daryl. Thank yep. you. So this is uh, from Larry Hendricks and it's a question for Mike. So Mike, what would you like on your first video submission? Oh, you know, it almost doesn't matter because the main thing is to just meet you, see you with your instrument. If you want to play a, a chord or two and do some of those early exercises that I have in the um, in the beginning of the curriculum, that's fine. If you're already a, an immediate intermediate player and you know some tunes, um, if you can find one that's on that I'm teaching on the site, uh, that's great because I have these rhythm tracks that you can play along with. I usually like if people do that, if they're already great players. Um, and then, you know, tell me a little bit about your background, um, what you know, do you know how to read music? Do you learn by ear or tablature? Um, what kind of things do you hope to get out of the lessons with me? What, where, where do you feel that your Achilles heel is? And what, what areas do you hope to, to benefit from? I like that. You're asking them what they want because you you alone can help them get what they want. And that's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. They, they It helps if somebody says, hey, I, this whole thing of playing swing and jazz, I don't know what anything about theory. And so how do I go about that? Or, you know, my rhythm is faulty when I jam with people. I can't seem to keep up. Speed is an issue. Or yeah. Learning tunes, you know, memorizing tunes can sometimes be an issue for people. Um, okay. So it's, help, it's helpful for me to know. Great. Um, this is more of a comment than it is a question. Mark is, is taking lessons with Tony Trishka, but he just wanted us to know he's never lived in a cellar. <laughs> I'll tell you, you're taking lessons in that cellar, though. You yeah. missed it. <laughs> we said basement. Yeah. We said basement, not cellar. Yeah. I'm from Pennsylvania. There's a difference. Oh, oh yeah, you got the, that's where you have the potatoes, right? In the cellar. <laughs> that's, exactly right. that's exactly right. You can't live the real bluegrass life till you've lived in a cellar or a barn or a car. We or have car. Wait a minute. You know. <laughs> Choose a place where the weather's good. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, this is kind of a long one, but it is a question uh, with regards to Daryl's DVD lesson, Chops and Groove. Maybe oh, that's groove. Yeah. <laughs> goof. I don't know what a goof is, but I don't know what a goob is, but anyway. Tell it to the goovener. Can you recommend and hopefully play that rhythm groove you demonstrate and talk about the role that Mike plays on it on, on mandolin? Yeah. Well, you know, the the idea of the chop on the fiddle is pretty darn close and really adapted from the mandolin chop. The whole idea that you're gonna be able to it's it's just a little percussion. Uh, with some note to it, right? And and you know that the mandolin players will often just you know chop down without any note at all, but they can. Yeah, there you go. You can hear Mike doing that. Even no note at all, just mute. Oh, that sounds much <laughs> better. No, I think I'm just hard you to do that, and then I'll just airbow. <laughs> well, so, the the thing developed because the mandolin player was taking a solo and there was no chop. So yes. the player had to so, do that, what the mandolin player had been doing. The yeah, back. So one of my great teachers, Richard Green, actually invented the, the technique, and I think I was patient number two on that one. And uh, but the idea is that you're, you know, it's accompaniment, right? You know, so uh, you're, you know, you coming down, you hit the string, and then you get another sound as you come off the string. So it involves staying on the string. You, you contact, you keep your contact, and then you have a sound. So it's down. And then up. That's kind of the difference between that and something called and what we'd call chunking, where you're just bouncing the bow off the string. But this, you get twice the sound for just about the same amount of work. And whereas you'd get that because we're holding the bow on the string. You get a lift out of it as well. So you get a lot. You can do a lot with that. So that's kind of a fairly, I mean, well, it's been around now for as long as I've been around, 40 years. Well, you, so like many of you might not know that when I moved in next door to Daryl, he had a full drum set in his living room. Oh, my gosh. And an electric yeah. bass and a 
grand piano. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't was, live next door to us, Patricia. You would have been screaming. <laughs> he was a hell I don't know about a, my house. Oh my God, I know what it's he like. He was a hell of a drummer. He is a hell of a drummer. Is that hell right, Terrell? Yeah, hell is the operative word there. And all of us, all of us were totally fascinated with rhythm in, in every yeah. level. Yeah. Not just bluegrass, all styles, whether it was yeah. R&B, or jazz or Latin styles, exactly. Indian. We wanted to know how could we get the those feels out of a string band, and yeah. this was all part of that development. Like, it, well, you developed a very interesting and distinctive sound. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike. I interrupted. No, no, no. You. Just saying, just do whatever. Scratch your mandolin. You know, beat up your fiddle. Find some yeah. way of creating that groove that somebody might have gotten with a shaker, or gotten with brushes on a snare drum. And mm -hmm. Those were the sounds we were trying to copy cool yeah can we take one more question here and then i'd love to have you guys play something i don't know if there's any requests here but while um, we're taking this question i'll see if there's uh, any requests and remember folks it has to be call and response um so here is a question from nate he's working on uh no tremolo on mandolin i don't know if you can read that mike i can do it fairly well once it's started but i have a hard time starting without delaying or pausing what's your suggestion mike? yeah starting and stopping the tremolo that is that is a little bit of a bugger i have to say i talk in my lessons about just making sure the pick doesn't go too deep into the string that's one of the issues usually so you should ride on top of the string. Also to keep a really loose pick grip so that it's it, it really is flopping. If you grip it too tight here, it's it doesn't have, um, I think of them as shock absorbers. <laughs> You're going over speed bumps, right? And you need some give in that pick. It's got to it's gotta have a little give to it. Keep in mind you're hitting the string so many more times that you don't have to hit it very hard. It's it's going to be naturally loud um, because because you you know blah, 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 you're really giving it to it. So so with that in mind, you can pull out of the string. That's going to give you uh, the ability to skate over the top of it, uh, hopefully. But all these things being said, I can only say so much until I see what you're doing. And usually, as soon as I see somebody, I can I can find something and say, oh, I see what's going on. You're turning your hand out or you're, I can tell if you're holding your pick too tight or I can see that you're back here by the bridge where the strings are tighter. And if you move forward a little bit, it, it's going to be more relaxed. So that's the, the short answer anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a, that's a good answer. And we certainly have a lot of questions and uh, please don't be impatient with us as you guys um all can see there's a lot of questions here and we want to educate but we also want to entertain so um what do you guys think what, what well, would you like you to know, try to play the thing with this you know the current technology for this is you know obviously we're limited because we can't be in sync with each other until they get the 5g up and we have to wear our helmets you know our <laughs> tinfoil hats uh, we're not going to be able to uh Maybe if I put some <laughs> headphones on, I'd be able to hear you better, Daryl. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. All right. uh, hey, what's going on? Hey. I guess if we all oh. had, if we all had fiber optics, it might work. Is that the story? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody said five G, so that's what I was thinking. But but one of the but, things we why, did. Let's just remove the time problem. Let's I know. What's up with time. that? Just get rid yeah. of the latency. What is up? Time with that? is a magazine. Yeah, we. Yeah. You know, let's it's, just. One of the things we did a lot when we met was free play, like okay, free improvise. Yeah. So, and so we thought it'd be cool to just play. Just right, well, I'm just going to give you guys the platform then, and and just yeah. if if it's not perfect, everybody understands. You know, this, let's just it's see. Going what kind of, it's, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be perfect. Regardless. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> you guys, ha you guys have the mic. Okay. Thank you. 
Nice. <laughs> that was wonder really what, interesting. I wonder what that sounded like. <laughs> well, you'll you'll be able to know because we'll we keep that. Just uh, do a fiddle tune, just so people can hear what 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 why it doesn't work. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Understand. Somebody okay. asked Brandon. Somebody's on a delay, but who's on the delay? Am I the, on the delay or are you on the delay? Nobody knows. <laughs> who's delayed? It's I like think you're both Einstein, delayed, man. It's like, <laughs> we're like I'm hearing what you're playing after you're playing it. And I'm you're hearing what you're playing, playing after you're playing, playing it. So, <laughs> so we can, can just talk right predict? on top of each other and it sounds fine. Okay, pick a tune and I let's wanna... just totally mess this up. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay. Why it doesn't okay. work. Attention, attention. Music is going to happen. That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. <laughs> but this slippage. is why, but I'll tell you, this is why David created Video Exchange because yeah. it is just impossible. Right. Well, to get yeah. a really good lesson and be able to play along with your student or anything like that. And, it's, but you know, there may be a day when that latency is good. gone, but you know, speed of light and all that. Um, okay. Couple other questions here. If you guys don't mind, um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Somebody wanted to know what both of your practice regimens are every day, especially huh? now that you're home, maybe you're practicing a little bit more or differently or what's, what, do you, what have you got different. to say? There's, there's, it's, you know, I mean, I work from home and always have. So, um, to have the kids around as much as they are, um, is not as crazy for me as it might be for some who were used to going away from the house and all of a sudden they try and do it all in the house. So, so things haven't changed that much. Um, what's cool is having all this time now. I've actually found myself going back 
to some of these old books. You see all these books behind me, and 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 looking through like some jazz study books and looking at some thing. Um, that's been really cool to to revisit some things that I feel that I never really got a full handle on. And so that's kind of what I've been doing. My kids discovered my LP collection. Oh, awesome. And so they've been playing records and they found yeah. all kinds of stuff. Did they really? <laughs> like cool. what? what are, and what then are... I found some things for them. Like what Well, they found, they found Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. Oh, my goodness. Because they liked the cover <laughs> with the whipped cream, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody and, likes that. You know, I don't know. Um, Lucy, <laughs> Josie found Chaka Khan. You know, oh. She's grooving butt off on Chaka Khan and, and Little Feet. She liked the nice. cover of Little Feet. And so oh, she's yeah. Playing around and things I like Chaka really Khan, too. Fruits and vegetables. So, you know, from that, I, I then slip in what I want them to hear. <laughs> yeah. That's, how about you, Daryl? What's what's happening musically? Yeah. What's it? What What are you playing? Well, yeah. You days? know, there is more a little more time, you know, so I can actually occasionally spend more time just nice. just breathing. You know, it's like uh, the the time you would spend meditating, observing yeah. the breath. Right. So those kind of things. It's really hard to put that together when you know you got 10 minutes to right before on. you have to rush out the door. So yeah. that's been great. Um, working and, on your uh, tone then, working on your sound. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. working on, yeah, because, you know, same with a mandolin, you know, the, the actual point of contact where you're actually, that's the sound is all coming out of is microscopic, really. It's, it, it's just such a small place where the either pick hits the string or the bow hits the string it's this tiny tiny spot and if you're not in control of that spot then uh, you know you're going to be unsatisfied yeah mm -hmm. that's good that's those are good tips on practicing and i think working on your sound is so important because we all get working on those really difficult passages just that's trying right. to get the hell through them and you forget uh -huh. You know, yeah. you got to work on each note. Tony Trishka always says there should be a separation between each note, but each note also needs to sound good. And so you need That's to that. you need to work on the sound that you're making always, always. That's um, what we're hearing from the students. I'm I'm just oops. hearing from all of them that they're just loving finally having some time to spend yeah. with their instrument. And so there there's some real pluses of this. I know there's a lot of folks with fear so, and craziness, but try to embrace that the, the what what is good about this time. Yeah, because you mm -hmm. know, there'll be a time when we're all back at work and we're getting ready for the holidays and all of that. And mm -hmm. we'll say, gosh, how did I let, you know, yeah. those two and a half months or three months or whatever <laughs> it ends up being go by me without like baking bread or cleaning out the sock drawer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, well like we this, got a question. This, this question is a good question. Here yeah, is, I, I yeah. like it too. So I thought I'd put that up there. Thank you, Alan, yeah. for a good question and wondered, yeah. you know, which of you would like to take that first? Oh, go ahead. Go. Yeah, um, you know, writing a new tune, uh, you have to remember that you don't have to do that, do it all uh, out of context of anything else. Uh, a lot of my, what I consider my best tunes have been written, sort of inspired by another tune. So you can really, uh, you know, you might just take a chord progression from another tune and say, well, I'm just going to write an upside down version of this tune that I really like, you know, if you get something like a, like, um, like rubber dolly for some, you know, if you could say, okay, well, I'm just going to write a whole new tune based on the chords to rubber dolly, but I'm going to go the opposite way. Mm. You know, and then you've got, you've got a place to start. And then you can, once you've got something to play off of, you know, rather than just looking at a blank sheet of paper, then you can start messing around with it, doing doing the things that you that you get you get you get an opinion because you're getting inspired by what's already there. That's that's good advice too, Mike. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, on that? I mean, I I think one of the things that people have to do is not be too critical on themselves, with especially those initial ideas that come. Uh, if they're real natural and they come out of your instrument and your own playing, um, don't say to yourself, oh, gosh, that sounds too much like so-and-so's tune or that's, that's not cool enough. It's not it's too traditional sounding or it's not unique enough. 
um, go ahead and embrace it for what it is at that mm -hmm. moment of, of um, inception. And, and don't worry about developing it necessarily right away either. I'll, I'll put things on tape. I'll, I'll log all these little seedlings and then I'll come back to them later. And sometimes I can find a way to fit two of them together. Uh, that's, that's a technique I used uh, more recently. Um, but just let the, let the notes go and, and follow them. Um, there's so much to this whole thing. I mean, once you go down the rabbit hole, it's a big world. You, know? yeah. you start thinking about classical music and great composition and counterpoint and all and orchestration and there's so much to it. But just you know, the great the great music is is the music that we can remember and it's just beautiful and simple. I like the name of that new bluegrass tune you're going to write, Rabbit Hole. <laughs> yeah, okay, here it comes. <laughs> there it comes. So um, do you think you, and we're getting a lot of requests for music. Maybe we're just chatting a wee bit too much, but we are old friends. Um, do you think you guys could do a little call and response uh, yeah. playing for us? What, what tune could that be? <clears throat> yeah, let's play opposite phrases of a tune. Let's, let's play a tune yeah. like... Um, um, because the cool thing about these fiddle tunes is they have all of them have four parts yeah. to the A section and four parts to the B section. So I was actually of, thinking something like, uh, you know, uh, oh, Norman Blake or something like that. Uh, Ginseng Sullivan would be interesting because it's it's even phrasier because it's a song, right? It's phrasier. Oh, wow. hmm, I uh, like that. <laughs> This is so maddening <laughs> like, because yeah. Daryl and I are all about grooving. You know? Yeah, and you just can't do it, can you? No way. I mean, if we were to do this live immediately, he would have started playing a rhythm yeah. and we would have yeah. been off to some place. Well, thanks for, but, thanks for trying. I, oh, yeah, I appreciate well, you trying. I mean, that's work. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, it's still yeah. sounds like music. And, and well, really, you know. We've got another question here. Um, what would be a good basic repertoire for a fiddle and mando duo? That's oh, a good question. Wow. Okay. Basic repertoire. Well, there's a long tradition of fiddles and mandolins. I mean, they're tuned the same. So you've got, you know, lots of traditions. You've got the whole American, various regions of America with yeah. fiddle music from each of those regions. And so... For me, it's just about knowing the same tune as the fiddle player, or vice versa. Yeah. If if you're in if you're in North Carolina, it's going to be one thing. If you're in, it's another. If you're in New Orleans, it's another. Texas, it's and so and so. It's just a, developing a body of repertoire with whoever it is you're hanging with. You know, I tell my students that all the time. Like, it's it's just knowing the tunes. You know, it's sort of a door opener. You know, mm -hmm. like when you sit down to jam with people, it's like, hey, do you know Golden Slippers? Uh, no. What about Rubber Dolly? Uh, yeah, I know that one. Boom. That's a good tune for a man yeah. in the middle because both of you know it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't don't sell those those tunes short like Golden Slippers and, and Rubber Dolly because they're, you know, they're the basic, uh, hey. you know, it's a common language. And that's what's great. You can walk into, you know, a jam all over the world and you'll you'll hear these these tunes and and people can play together and that's that's why you'd want to you know you want to learn those common tunes because uh you know you can play them you can play them with other people all over yeah. the world it's that way with jazz too absolutely yeah you know, so daryl and i've explored golden slippers our first record we did a extended version of it with, with 
He played octave mandolin, right? Yeah, yeah, the octave mandolin, the mandocello. That was a blast. I oh, was mandolin. Uh, yeah, and I was a mandolin player. We just took it through all these different um, ways. Styles. Now, of course, the fiddle player, you know, it helps if they have some of these rhythmic uh, things that Daryl has developed, ways yeah. of playing backup, you know, so that. Yeah. But even uh, if you're just playing, uh, you know. It works. I love that. Do that. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that stuff is fine. You know. Yeah, but, that's another good question. I, I appreciate that. And um, we want to help everybody build their repertoire, whether it's for mando and fiddle or, you know, fiddle and banjo, all of that. And I think a lot yeah. of that is covered at Artist Works, whether it's with Tony or, yeah. um, you know, Noam or anybody. Um, good question and great answers. Thank you, guys. I think a lot of the teachers actually teach some of the same tunes. Absolutely. As you jump yes. school to school. So there's like this body of known bluegrass repertoire yeah. that just... Yeah. Everybody plays. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that a little bit. Yeah, with Brian, you know, because uh, just just we checked in at the beginning of this, this whole thing and said, "Well, we're we teaching this and that." Okay, we should probably let's you know let's agree on a few on a few of these tunes that we're all going right. to teach. And that that helped, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And and Michael Dave's teaches a lot of the same repertoire, and mm -hmm. um, that's I think you're just touching on a really important point to to learn the rep. Whether yep. it's you know whether it's classical, whether it's yeah. jazz, whether it's bluegrass, especially if you want to enjoy playing the music you love, you need to have the the, the baseline standards, and That's and it. then you can start adding the spice of original tunes and things like that. So, all right, can we take another question then? Is that all right sure, with you guys? Let's all right. Go. Um, at what school level of <laughs> mandolin learning would it be safe to pick up the bow and try some fiddle? Oh, I, I would saying. never have made that connection. Like, should I go for really? mandolin to fiddle? No, I'm, I'm that's a, a player. That's a bluegrass so. tradition, actually. Yeah. Oh, is it? You give yeah. little Jimmy the mandolin first, and then when he's a little oh, bit that's older, interesting. because it's the same tuning, and okay. you don't have to deal with that pesky bow yeah. Yeah, and that pesky no frets business. <laughs> yeah, what is that? I, I actually had quite a few mandolin players who are, you know, getting on the fiddle, and it's it's nice because I I have had uh, I have some knowledge of the mandolin and, and the whole pick thing as well. And Mike, of course, is a great fiddle player as well. You, you didn't realize that, but um, it's true. Um, I'm not going I could hand it to you, but uh, <laughs> I don't think you want the extra string. <laughs> I've seen you play guitar, Mike, I, but I didn't know you did oh, fiddle Mike's too. So ridiculous. So yeah. are we, we have to answer poor Aaron here. Aaron Coder wants yeah. to know what well, level. You know, it's nice if you're if you're pretty comfortable. You don't have to look at your left hand, right, uh, on the mandolin. Okay. If you can kind of know where you are somewhat, uh, without having to look too much. But really, you know, they're they're different enough. Uh, it's nice to know where the notes are, right? It's, it's that mostly helps. left hand stuff that's the in common thing. So when you go to the fiddle, you can just say, okay, well, they're pretty much in the same place. It just, you know, it's <laughs> you got to be a little bit more precise. But really, you know, I've discovered that even though, though there's, you know, with the frets, you supposedly have a lot more uh, insurance on that stuff. It, it doesn't always work that way. I, I noticed that I, you know, I, if I hit something wrong uh, behind the fret, I just get a tick the sound, you know, it sounds a lot like yeah. the fiddle. So Muted. it's yeah. not really, you know, you got to be pretty precise with both instruments. As a teenager, I was kind of doing them all at once, <laughs> Yeah. but I was very obsessed. So I started on guitar and, the, but the teacher I had played mandolin, banjo and fiddle and, Kind of one by one, you know, from age 13, 14, 15, 16, he kind of just, I just did it, you know, and it was, mm -hmm. it's very common in the bluegrass world to play them all a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, I started, I, I remember picking up the banjo for six months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it helps yeah. you get an understanding of what it, what it takes. And it helps yeah. when you play with other players to know what they're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. So we've uh, done quite a few of these. I would say maybe ten of these oh, live cool. broadcasts. We've got more complainers here. Uh oh. I want them to oh. stop complaining. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> complaining Just allowed. Do, you're not playing enough. Oh, you're not talking kind of enough. Of I mean, come on, folks. We're trying, to, kind of we're trying mood to do the tap dance here. Come on. Yeah. What do you um, need? What do they want from us? Oh I'm well, are they? Yeah, let's give. just not go there. Here's an here's another question. Say my fiddle um, playing partner and I are playing Shady Grove. Can you demonstrate some cool rhythms to jazz it up? Jazz it up. Let's do that.
<laughs> no, you. Go ahead. How do okay. you jazz it up there? You go. You know, there's a lot. go into six eight in the middle of the ten yeah, yeah no. i mean what we're doing melodically is basically just rhythmic displacement you know you've got this very simple melody well you can take a phrase like that and displace some of the notes i'm just anticipating some of the notes just before they would normally occur yeah. or yeah, you can talk about longer yeah if you're talking about accompaniment there's all kinds of ways you know that just the um i've got tons of material on this this idea where are you doing like a backbeat yeah. or are you doing at halftime something like right that whole idea where you're um you know you're just expanding the same thing but it's a totally different feel or, it's the same tempo but yeah. you're you're cutting your rhythm in half. Your accents are happening half more as often, often or half an hour as often. Or you're putting in those threes, man, the the, the uh, mother rhythm, right? One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two. Right? That, uh, and that's the at the basis of pretty much American rhythm you know putting those two threes and a two that's the bow diddly yeah. all bow comes diddly from africa really. yeah i like that and you've given them you've given them good guidance on how to jazz up some bluegrass too and i i like that because i really wouldn't have known how to do that and i like the way you cut it in two and and all of that yeah, so yeah. You've, you've enlightened yeah. me as well um, so not only do we have some complainers here, we have some interlopers as well. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. They've been playing <laughs> for 50 plus years. Well, we did stop Who to go is to the that bathroom. Guy? <laughs> and we did sleep. Okay. Yeah, I thought I told him to stay in the truck. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, for any, anybody that doesn't know who Noam Pekelny is, um, he's them. just one of the preeminent banjoists uh, of, of our day. No, our... he's not. He's one of the funniest men on the planet. Yeah, well, then he's yeah, that, too. Yeah, that, that, yeah. well, I guess he... both could happen at once. There's some kind of weird... He's oh, hilarious. God. Yeah. But he's also um, the newest addition to the oh, Artist Works roster, so we're quite happy, happy to say. So yeah. happy to have him part of the team here. Yeah. Welcome, Noam. Yeah. yeah, we're happy to have him too. So I think we have one final. Thank you, Nome, for checking in. That was very nice of you. Um, so I just have one final question here, and then maybe we will try to do a little call and response thing to close this out. This is a long, kind of a long question, but I'm still gonna. Um, actually, I'm gonna put this other one up here first. It's a lot about mandolin, but who is the 13 year old prodigy mandolin churro player? Do you know that, Mike? Who is the 13 year old prodigy? I don't. Mandolin? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer okay. to that. I'm How sure there are. There? Many... There's probably 12, 12 guys. There's maybe there's. There's 10, 10, 13 year old. The Toro thing is exploding over the world. And I'm guessing that this Adam was from Japan. I know there's a big scene in Japan. Yeah. Could be. And I'm really proud of how it's how it's expanded up here since I went down to Brazil with Daryl Anger and the Turtle Island String Quartet and came back with a pile of CDs and books and Oh wow. And a bunch of friendships, man. You you made friends all over that place. Oh yeah. yeah. I like to think of myself as a bit of a spreader of the good word up here for you're sure you're an ambassador you're an yeah. ambassador mike ambassador mike <laughs> <laughs> just, just hard-headed <laughs> well, 
I just put this up here quickly um, because we've been talking to a lot of the festival owners and sponsors and such uh, just to see what the heck everyone's going to be able to do this summer. And a lot of innovative things are coming up. Uh, We're learning that uh, some festivals, whether they're bluegrass or not, may go to drive-in status. So you may be able to drive and still have people on stage that are six feet apart. Um, but I know that people like Gray, Flo- Gray Fox and um, Planet Bluegrass, Rocky Grass, they're, they're diligently working on getting some kind of event this mm-hmm. summer for everybody. And of course, Artist Works really wants to participate in that. And we will do oh. everything we can, um, you know, to, to help make it happen if it's possible. And uh, so everything's up in the air, as we all know. Uh, but I would just ask you to please be patrons, if you can be, of these great organizations, because next year we all want to be able to go to these festivals and do the tarp run and, and have a great time. Um, <laughs> yeah, enjoying. we do our Marshall Mandolin Summit up there in Marshall, Michigan, with the Northfield Mandolin people, as I'm playing here. Uh, and we're in the same conversation, like, how okay. can we do this in August? What kind of event could we create that would give people uh, some of what they we're hoping to come and see. Yeah. So. Anything coming up for the two of you guys that, you know, any CDs or anything at all that you want to mention here when we have people's attention? Is there anything that you'd wow. like to talk about? CDs well, that are already we just out? put out our, our celebratory yeah. birthday celebration, 40th yeah. year, uh, called The Capo. Yeah, and where did I put that thing? Yeah, you, you must have one nearby. I've got a box of about 400, uh, not two doors down from where I'm standing. Silly me. What kind of promotion? Yeah, there you go. There I thought are. I saw that cover. All right. Yeah. So yeah, that's us, is. just the two of us. Uh, no overdubs, no other musicians. Yeah. And where do they get it? Where can everybody get it? I'll put um, that as a you banner get it on off here. Off Mike's website, right? You can yeah. Tell me where they Mike. should go. Well, uh, you go to either my Bandcamp site where you can download it if you don't have a CD player anymore. Um, I just need a domain name. And, and Mike's, MikeMarshall.net, right? Is that, yeah, is that yeah. there's okay. there. And all the finest of, uh, I imagine you can get it on Amazon as well and uh, all those places. You can okay. buy them. You can probably buy them used on eBay for people that are trying to get rid of them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Of course, they gain about thirty percent in resale value if they're signed. So <laughs> hold out for a signed one. So maybe no. we, should, we should give a few away as as premiums for joining Artist Works or something. Then we definitely should do that. Yeah, fact, yeah let's yeah, promise we're going to do that. Okay, we do promise. Back room there. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can buy this the new CD at MikeMarshall.net. You see that scrolling across the bottom yeah, of your DarylAnger.com. Also, you can buy it there. Where, can, where are Daryl? Or, or you can go to bandcamp.com slash Daryl Anger and download it through a direct okay. download or buy the physical item. So. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, um, let's see. I, I feel like there was another question here. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and ask this one. Um, do you know Strummish? Yes. Okay. In fact, All right. I so have this a is greeting a- about it that's going to go up as soon as we finish our um, gala guest uh teacher month here um yeah strum machine what it's is fun. this tell it's, us it's, about this this is new to me it's backing tracks uh that are generated it's, it's kind of like the uh you know it's like the machine you know like the jazz play along i real but it's but it's for you know fiddle tunes it's got a mandolin a guitar and a bass and you okay. can okay you can slow them down or you can speed them up do all that stuff and it's you know, it's a computer, but it's the sounds are good. Uh, nice. it's, it's a subscription, but it's it's very inexpensive. Okay. <laughs> and I'm I've subscribed. I think it's cool. Oh, and it's... you know what's cool, extra cool, is that you can actually generate uh, backup tracks. You could just do the bass and the mandolin if you want, and then put a, your own guitar on there. Oh, okay. very cool. Rhythms, you know, just beautiful. That's great. Or is it better sounding other... than Band in the Box? I yes. That would be a yes. That would, a, be, <laughs> that would be a definitive yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was not a huge fan of yeah. that one. Yeah. Well, it's still, it's still a computer, but man, you can get you can get whatever tempo you want, and it's just something that will you know it it won't uh, it'll keep you honest. Tell you. Ah, so All right. you. I sure like playing along with Brian Sutton. I must say, on our well, side. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you can only get Brian Sutton on Artist Works, and 
That's right. that's, Those are that's great backing experience. tracks, aren't they? Those are oh, really Lord. something. You can't even, you know, touch. No. Nobody can touch that. That's like the no. difference between somebody's, you know, Roland drum machine and Bernard Purdy or something. Like that's that. right. Well, for those of you who are visiting us and, um, you know, watching this wonderful live dispatch from home, we have a lot of bluegrass artists that teach at Artist Works, And, of course, Mike Marshall and Daryl Langer are two of them. But we also have Tony Trishka on banjo along with Noam Pakelny on banjo. Uh, we also have Andy Hall on dobro uh, yeah. and Missy Rains on bass. Um, and now who am I? And I said Michael Andy Hall, and Michael Daves on vocals. Am I missing anybody? I think not. I think Tony, Noam, Mike, Daryl. Andy, Andy Missy, Missy, and Michael. That's us. That's us. Okay. That's pretty much the band, I think. Yeah. That's the band. That's the band. <laughs> so you can learn from all of these wonderful people. Um, and uh, we welcome you all, especially during this time when um, you know, we're kind of finding ourselves at home and uh, we're trying to make Artist Works a little bit more affordable, especially during this time. So make sure you check the crawl there and see that... Um, Home 25. Home 25 code. gives you a nice, that's a nice healthy discount there. Uh, if you prefer to get some free sample lessons, you can go to artistworks.com forward slash free lessons. I can put that up here for you. Um, but we would love to welcome you regardless of what instrument you play. We teach bluegrass and lots of other things too. So you can go to Artistworks and take a look. So let's. It's a fabulous way to learn, friends. I could go oh. on and on and on. I yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah. Most of the students. What, what are you going to say there? I'm not going to say it. I wish I, gotta... I had this when I yeah. was coming up. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that, shall we? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do great. too. Yeah, I think about how hard it was for us in the 70s to get access to any of these questions. Miles. And miles in the snow, barefoot in Florida. <laughs> no, the both scorpions. directions. <laughs> and the snow had to be hip deep, right? I mean, it's not a story if the snow wasn't yeah, hip deep. Yeah, and Florida snow is sticky, man. <laughs> That's It'll nasty. Hold you yeah. down and then the, the Alligators in that up. snow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, can you guys just play another call and response or something like that just to yeah. finish, us up, finish us up on a How about a little, um, I was thinking about Bonaparte's retreat. Sounds good. Folks. 
that's, oh, that's boy, music. You know, it can be out, it that. can be completely out of sync and still be good because it just music. completely devolves into that <laughs> cartoon themes. <laughs> what can you do, man? No, nothing Pretty with soon. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both, Daryl and Mike, for for joining us here today, but also for being a really important part of our history. And oh, thank you for making artist works better and special and. And Mike, you always say, you know, you can't get this anywhere else. And you're so right. It's a unique experience. I don't want to toot my own horn here, but it is unique because of the talent of, of masters like you. Thank you so much Thank for being you all. part of Thank the whole Artist Works team for doing what yeah. they do to keep this thing functioning well. You can imagine how many videos they have to deal with and how many oh formats. My. And it always functions. If anything doesn't work. I send a little email, and in about ten seconds, that sucker is playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, got a great right. team. We don't. We're not a huge team, well, but it's a little you know, family business really. Is. Yep. It's a beautiful top, thing, top you know. Girl. Yep. So. But everybody says hello, and um, from you know David, my husband and co-founder, um, to uh, John Graves and Marcus and Jordan and Don um, and Richard and Adam and Annie wow. and Will. Um, Howdy every, to all of you. Everybody yeah. says hello and thank you for your wonderful music and for sharing it and for giving us a therapeutic hour in all a right. crazy, crazy time. So thank you guys for joining us and thanks everybody out there for your questions and your comments. Um, and I hope that you all stay healthy and happy and cheers to all of you that are on the front lines and caring for thank people you. that are yeah. sick. Stay yeah. safe, stay healthy, stay home. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Practice that thing. Practice that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to end it. Make Very us happy. good, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Go practice, you schmuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. See you all again. Bye. Cheers.